Hey everybody, thanks for joining me today. Today, evidently, you're searching for how to paint a ceiling. But first of all, I thought, well, maybe I don't even need to make a video. Surely somebody has put up a good how to paint a ceiling video. So I thought, well, let me just check it out. And uh, I saw all sorts of how to paint ceiling videos, and not one of them that I could find was doing it proper. We're not talking about the a brand new house how to paint the ceiling or we're painting the walls how to paint the ceiling we're talking about just the ceiling by itself a lot of you guys have painted the walls in your house three or four or five times and have left that dingy uh, stain ridden uh, dark ceiling alone only because it's a pain in the butt we got crap on the wall we got furniture in here and I'm really not going to move that much out of the room is we're going to do a one coat on the ceiling and there's some water stains in here I'm going to show you how to take care of that okay guys this is like a typical room you've got a, a piano that we're not going to be able to move we've got a couch we've got photos on the wall TV another uh, picture all these pictures here we're not touching those like this uh, buffet we're not touching that we're not moving all this out of the way we will however move this couch out and this little table out and this table and chair maybe that one but anything in this toward the center of the room that's light enough that we can move we'll move out of the room if, if not we'll push them to the walls i want to show you the stains in the ceiling and these would be uh, a little worse than medium stains they're not really dark but um, we do need to pre-treat these stains Here's another one right here, and uh, I believe there's some over here. They're hard to see, but there's some dark spots right there. And then look at that uh, heat register. It's all yellowed up. We're going to take that off, and we're going to spray paint those once we clean them. And uh, also, we'll be taking the blades off the fan. But uh, let me show you what products we're using today. So we're going to use kills too, and most of you would think, well, you could put the kills on, and then you put your ceiling paint over the top of that. But no, we're going to use this as our ceiling paint. So it's going to give us a one-two punch, and it's going to be nice and bright and white. Okay, so you see the shellac up here. This is what we're going to pre-treat our water stains with. So we're going to seal all those stains in, and then after about 20 minutes, this dries really fast, after about 20 minutes, then we can go over the top of it with our kills. We're also going to use this uh, real thin painter's plastic. This is 0.31 to half a mil thick. And you're going to need a roller screed. This is a trick of mine here. I buy these 300 watt uh, clear bulbs and so I put these in in place of work lights because work lights you have to point in the area you're working but what we're going to do with that we'll put one or two up in the fan the fan light there and it'll it'll brighten this room up like you can't believe the rollers we're using are Purdy brand that's a whenever you get your rollers always get a good brand and I know you're like I don't know what good brand so you'd get a Purdy or a Wooster or a Sherwin Williams and I use minimum three quarter inch nap I even use three quarter inch nap on smooth walls it just gives it just a slight texture hides some imperfection and it holds a lot more paint so spend the extra money and get you some good rollers it'll make a huge difference today I'm trying out this frog tape I normally buy the uh, blue 3M 2 inch tape, but you don't want to use the tan tape, which uh, actually sticks too much. And when you pull that tan tape off, it could pull the paint off. We are not going to use this. If you have a small brush like this, do not use that on a job like this. It's going to take you forever. However, this is what I'm going to use. It's a three and a half inch purdy, and it's it's a nylon uh, bristle 
for uh, latex paint. It's nice and wide. It's nice and thick. It holds a lot of paint and it does a one heck of a job. So that's what you need to get. We also have this uh, painter pail right here. I recommend this one. This size anyway. Don't get the small ones. I see they have a little bitty tiny one. Don't get that. Um, you want to be able to fit your hand in the side here and uh, it makes a, a nice little paint pot and also gets you a pack or two of these liners that, that go in here so you don't have to uh, clean up all the time just throw away your liner and your roller frame this is a nine inch roller frame and it's the heavy duty one what you want to do is go ahead and spend the four or five dollars and get you the heavy duty one don't spend you know the dollar or dollar ninety eight and get the lightweight one because it'll just flex too much and that's just going to cause you issues also you're going to need an extension pole and this one's a Wooster Sherlock and uh, uh, Mr. Longarm makes a good one and uh, I think Sherwin Williams has their own brand but what's different about this one is you see it's not round so you need one that's a uh, hexagon or square something that once it's locked in place when you turn if you want to put pressure on the side of the uh, roller it's not going to spin also I can't say enough about these little uh, workbenches here they're at the perfect height that if you're about five foot to six and a half foot you can reach an eight foot ceiling no problem in fact I can reach a nine foot ceiling off of this so what I do is I have two of those and I set up along the wall and I can go about 10 feet so uh, I'll show you how I set that up in a minute so that's basically what we're going to use and so next thing to do is we're going to start moving some of the furniture out What's left now is I'm going to uh, lay down any breakables that's on the uh, tables and stuff. So uh, here we go. Over here, what I like to do is just uh, lay stuff down that could fall over. We're going to put plastic over that, that. Oh. Push this stuff back a little bit. I'm going to take the uh, blades off the fan so I can get around there and paint a little better. And then I'll show you what I'm going to do with those light bulbs. So hold on. Alright guys, so I'm going to take the fan blades down. And it takes a number three Phillips type bit. By taking the blades off your ceiling fan is going to save you a bunch of headaches. So just take them off. All right, now we got the blades off. So now we're going to take the bulbs out and take these glass shades off. And then we're going to install those 300 watt uh, clear glass bulbs. So let's get a look at the room right now. And we'll do a before and after. Looks pretty bright right all right here we go and here's after quite a bit of difference isn't it that bulb was about three dollars and fifty cents well worth it what I'm going to do next is we're going to start taping and draping the walls in plastic then we'll put traditional drop cloths on the floor 
before we put the tape around the perimeter, we're going to get rid of some uh, spider webs just in the corners right now. Then we'll we'll take the spider webs off the field uh, in a minute. But right now, just so our tape will stick better, we're going to make sure there's no uh, dust up in that corner in spider webs. So we're going to use a broom and we're going to sweep around the corner where the ceiling meets the wall. Okay guys, next we're going to apply the tape and we're going to apply it right here directly in the corner. We may, depending on uh, how the corner is laid out, we may have some brown show up on the ceiling part and we may have some white show up down on the wall part, but the tape will straighten that out. So just pull off about four feet, something that you're comfortable working with. And what you're going to do is you're going to press the top third in and then you're going to leave it up like so. So what we're going to do in a minute is we're going to put our plastic up here and then we're going to bring that down on the plastic to hold the plastic up. So I'm going to do the rest of the room that way. And then I'll get back with you. I got all the uh, frog tape up and now I'll show you how to put the plastic up. So you take your painter's plastic and it has a little slot you can pull the plastic through and on one side you cannot get to the edge of it and but on this side you can get to both edges. So it doesn't matter which edge we use uh, we're going to tuck it underneath that tape that we put around the perimeter and then we're going to pull the plastic down once we get it all tacked up. So I'll show you how that's done. I've got this plastic up here and I've got a, uh, just the one edge. I just lift the plastic up and tuck it under, bring it down. And it doesn't have to go in real perfect. It can be folded over or whatever. I just tuck it under and I just keep moving. Just like that. So you get all the way around the room. I got the plastic up all the way around the room. I haven't pulled it down yet. And I'm going to show you a trick on how to cut it. So we're going to come right there and overlap it about a foot so we'll have a little doorway through here. The easiest way to cut this plastic once you determine the length of it is uh, you take your pocket knife with a long blade or anything with a long blade squeeze it all together then cut it all at once. I've overlapped it about two feet actually what it ended up being and then you just walk around the room pulling this plastic down I forgot to mention that the plastic is nine feet wide Yeah. 
what I'm going to do next is I'm going to lay out the uh, cloth tarps on the floor and then I'll tape down some of these edges to the cloth tarp. Okay, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to bring the plastic down onto the tarp and put a couple of pieces of tape around there to keep the bottom edge down. Alright guys, so now I'm going to brush the whole ceiling down with this shop broom to get all the cobwebs down and any spiders and things like that. What we're going to do is we're going to uh, prime over all the major spots watermarks, things like that with this clear shellac. For extra stain hiding abilities, use the white shellac. Good heavy coat. We're going to paint this fan in place. And so what we have to do now, I got this uh, duster brush here, and what we're going to do now is get the dust off of it. It is really dusty up here. All right, guys, so one of my favorite cleaners is ammonia and water. And this mix is about one third ammonia and two thirds water. It's quite the grease cutter. Try to do this one handed here. wash with ammonia and then I'll rinse it off with some uh, fresh water. Okay guys, the fan is uh, dry now and I'm going to get ready to paint it with this uh, Forged Hammer Paint and Primer 1. It's uh, antique pewter and so the hammered finish ought to look pretty cool. And I'm just going to, I'm not masking anything off, I'm just going to paint it to the ceiling and then I'll just use the kills too and, and uh, paint around it and it'll cover just fine and before you guys get in the uproar about the uh, cooling vents right here this is just uh, faux vents because it's made to look like an old-time fan where the field winding was out here and the armature was inside here and so it needed that to cool but right here is the actual motor and there's no vents on it so we're just going to start painting here I guess well, it comes out all at once almost okay so uh now I'm going to paint the blades, but I'm not going to uh, take the hardware off. This is a quick, cheap 
facelift, so I'm going to paint the hardware this way, and then I'm going to take some paint and cut in here and then paint the blade. All right, guys, so I'm going to paint the heads of the screws. So what you have to do is you got to go out and get you some frisky gravy sensations, the poultry flavored, and use the cardboard box of that, and then uh, punch your screws through so you can paint the heads easier. So uh, there that is. have the fan blade painted I mostly I concentrated on the hardware and I've got it uh, the different color and now I'm going to brush on a color that the homeowner wants on the blades and I'm just going to do the one side and we're going to leave the top side just you know like it was originally and so we're just you know upgrading the part you see on the fan so um, anyway I've already stirred the paint. This is a acrylic latex paint and we'll just uh, I normally don't paint out of the paint can itself but since this is a small job I'll just go ahead and, and do that. So we'll get some paint on the blade and then we'll we'll cut in right here on this right around these little half moons here like so. And then I'm going to take the color on out this way and that's as far as I'm going to go and then I'll just paint out paint the uh, bottom of the blade out this way so we'll do this side here like so straighten up our brush marks and then we'll bring this paint around curl it around this side here just a hair to match this side. And now we'll just paint this whole blade. And to do the sides, I'm just going to tap it with my brush. Like so. You can see the paints on there. Once I get the paint on there, then I can straighten it up. Just lightly touch it. We'll do the same here. We don't want to load up the paintbrush with a bunch of paint and then come in here and hit that corner. It'll just get everywhere. So we're just going to tap the paint on. And then we'll come back with just a few little bristles. We'll straighten it up. Straighten it up around here. And then we'll come back one more time on the top. Just with a real light touch. Just get enough on there that you've got a good coat and we'll put a second coat on later. Okay guys, let's get this bucket open. So there's a, uh, a rip cord right here. We have to cut this lock and I like to get it started a little bit right here. And then you just rip it all the way around and watch your fingernails also don't don't forget when you buy this uh, primer to have them shake it All right, guys, uh, another little tip. Before you get started with the paint, have a damp uh, towel ready. This is just to wipe your hands off, or if you get your uh, paint on something that's not supposed to be on, you can quickly wipe it off. Just either have this hanging from you or somewhere where you can get to it quick. Here's the uh, paint pot, and buy these liners for it. And 
these paint pots have magnets built into them, these larger ones. I don't know about the smaller ones. But if you're using a small brush, let's see, it'll hold your brush up. Like if you're going to walk away, get lunch or something like that. On the bigger brush like we're using today, it won't, it won't catch. But it will catch on the side of the ferrule. So that's a handy feature to have. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take our cup and we're going to dip the uh, paint out and we're going to fill this paint pot one third to one half full. There we go, it's about half full. It's a lot easier to use a cup than to take that uh, lid off there and pour it out of that hole. Now what we'll do is we'll tape this to the side because we'll need that in a minute. Just like that, put our lid back over it. So we're ready to start cutting in. I got my uh, two benches set up. I should be able to go mostly all the way across that room. And another tip is if you're right-handed like I am, you'll want to go around the room counterclockwise. That way your right arm is closest to the wall, like so. The other thing I want to uh, stress is that you don't want to load that corner up with paint. You don't want to load your brush and cram it in that corner and pump paint into that corner. Because if you do, if your tape's not sealed perfectly, you'll get a run behind the tape and you won't know until you pull that off and then you got a mess. So what you're going to do is you're going to come in here, you're going to load the brush, come in here, leave about an inch and a half gap between your brush and the wall, lay the paint on then you're going to come back and flatten the brush out and you're going to slowly push the paint to the tape so you're going to load it on like this slowly bring it in and then you're going to just like uh, just a few bristles right in that corner like so and then you'll have a little ridge right here a lot of the times and you'll feather that out so uh, I'm going to mount the camera up a little different and I'll show you how to load the brush up and we'll do it for real. So I'm going to show you how to initially load your brush. So we're going to load paint in this brush to about a third of the way up. So we're going to drive the brush into the paint like so. Look at it. We need a little bit deeper. So we drive it in there. That's forcing the paint up in the bristle like so. Okay, then once it's loaded, then we're going to, we're not going to wipe the paint off on your bucket. We're going to slap it this way, slap it this way, and that's going to stop it from dripping for, oh, probably five, ten seconds. And that's the time you need to get it on the wall. If you just bring it in like this, it's going to keep dripping. The point of it is, is we not, we've got to get a lot of paint on the wall quick, so by tapping it, it stops the drips, gives you enough time to get it to the wall. All right, guys, so here's how you hold the paint pot. And I know it's probably self-explanatory, but I have seen people holding this this way, like so. And I've seen people holding it like this. But the way you hold it is you put your four fingers through this way, your thumb at the top, and that's how you do it. Okay, so here we go. Barely getting that last little bit of a brush into that corner. We're going to go ahead and paint this area right here. Now, if you just brush one way 
it'll jump over all those humps. So you at least have to go down and back. Put most of the paint on here, then work it to the corner. And then take this hard line off right here. We want paint in the corner, but not pumping it full. And we'll just continue around the rim like that. Okay guys, it took me 12 minutes to cut this whole room in. So, you see the importance of taping off the um, whole area here. There's a drip right there. There's a drip, drip. One there. Don't fool yourself and think you won't get a drip on something, especially if you're getting any work done. Okay guys, I'm done cutting in. So I have my brush stuck to the magnet on the side, standing straight up. And I'm taking this press and seal food wrap, like so. And then I'm going to put a hole toward the center. And then that's going to go over the brush handle. And then I'm going to seal that down. Just like that. And then I'm going to set that to the side while I roll the ceiling. And then that way, in case I need this, uh, to take care of any touch-ups or any drips, I have it readily available. Before we start rolling the paint, I'm going to show you how to basically uh, pre-break in this brand new dry roller so it'll absorb a lot of paint uh, right off the bat. Anyway, we'll get this baby out. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to wet this, but we're not going to drown it in water. We're just going to moisten it. And we're going to make sure all the pores are nice and moist. If, it's, if we leave it dry, the paint will stay on the outside for quite some time. And we won't get a full roller. So um, what we'll do is we'll just turn a little bit of water on. Get it on your hand and just kind of wipe it on. We're not trying to get it fully saturated as far as like dripping wet. Okay, squeeze it all in, and that's going to do it. What we're going to do is we'll screw the frame onto the extension pole. I'm going to put it on there really tight, and just to make sure it doesn't come loose, we're going to put some tape right there on that joint. We don't want that uh, spinning or coming loose while we're painting. Okay, so now we're going to take the roller cover, our pre-wet roller cover, and put that on nice and tight so you got a good seal right here. All right, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to put the roller screed in the five-gallon bucket. And you'll notice it has these hooks here. These will hook on the side. And we're going to use this not really as a screed, but just a way for us to spin the uh, roller so we can get the paint on it better. So the handle comes up, the bail comes up this way, so we have to put it in like so. That way we can move the handle over it. 
Okay guys, so we're going to start rolling here and we're going to do about a four foot by six foot section. And so our next section will be this one. So we want to put the five gallon bucket right here at the end of this six foot section we're going to stop at. So we're going to be able to dip out of there, do this section, and then we'll move the bucket over and then over to the last section. So I'm going to show you how to initially load this roller up. So we're going to dip it and we're going to lift and if the only way we can roll that is to put it on the screed and roll it down again. Up, roll it down. You see all we're using that screed for is, is to roll the roller. It's not to take the paint off. It's not to screed the paint off. It's just here to, to roll the roller. So we're going to sit here for a little bit and initially roll it up. Okay, we're, we're just about ready to apply the paint. So what I want to tell you is, you see on the right side of that frame where it sticks out from the roller, and then this side there's no frame? We're going we're gonna to be up here rolling against this wall here. So we do not want that side against the wall. So I want to load the roller this way, and I'm going to hold it there for a few seconds, shake it, and then I'm going to turn it and then go to the ceiling. What that does is if I sit here and I shake it, all the drips go to the bottom, and you can see it's dripping. Well, we don't want to wait. We want to leave all that paint on there, but we don't want to wait. So I'm going to shake a couple of times, flip it. Now the drips are on the top. I'll go right to the ceiling. What we do is we start in the center when we have the most paint on the roller. We start in the center and then we start working the paint to the end. If you start here and work this way, most of the paint will be here. But if we start in the center and we load up the center of the stroke with the most paint, then we can spread it both ends. Once you're comfortable with your coverage right here, we're going to dip again. A little shake and back up. We're going to come nine inches away and we're going to paint that nine inches. Now, we have a ridge in between the first 9-inch roll and the second 9-inch roll. So now we're going to feather that in basically with a dry roller. So we'll come this way, this way. Now we're going to just blend that in. Real light touch. Starting at the center, working our way out. And then we're going to dry roll real light and blend it in. So you can see we have three nine inch passes, about six and a half foot long. And then I'm going to go a couple more passes here and then do that section, then that section, all the time feathering into these wet edges. And then we're just going to keep marching across the room.
came across the room this way, and I just wanted you to see these stains here. Now, they turned a little darker since I put the shellac on them, but that's just fine. One other thing I want to tell you is, whenever you paint over anything that's been shellacked, it takes four times longer to dry. So, everything else will be dry, and you'll see that all these spots will look wet and be a different color. So, just give it time, and once it dries, it'll match the rest of the ceiling. Okay, guys, we're uh, ready to pull the plastic down. So, we're going to start pulling the plastic down where we started putting the plastic up. And so, we're going to take, we're going to pull down at, at about a 45 degree angle, and we're just going to work it around, plastic and all. Got a nice edge up there. There may be some places where it bleeds through. We're going to find out. There's a few places up there where it bled through. But Okay guys, now we'll just wad this plastic up. Hey kitty. We'll wad this plastic up and we'll throw it away. Pull the drop cloths up. Okay guys, I think the fan turned out really good. I'll turn the lights on. Remember when I said to uh, not put a lot of paint in the corner so it don't get down behind the tape? I've got a few of those spots. You can see it right there. And then over here in the corner and I didn't realize that until after I pulled the tape and plastic down. And then I have one over here. Can you see it? Right at the, right where the ceiling meets the wall. So I'm going to show you how we fix that. So, the homeowner had, already had some of the brown paint and there's like a whole pint and a half left. Now, this is going to make that uh, this repair easy. Since we're not going to need much paint, we're just going to use a little bitty lid. Like so. All right, so we're going to take just a little bit of paint on our brush. Just go in there and just straighten that up. And that's it. Here's a, since I'm up here, here's another little spot. It doesn't have to be perfect. All right. There that one is.
All right. When that dries, you'll never know.